Welcome to the notes on proving triangles congruent using side, 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 or side, angle, side. It's our second day on this. I want to do a couple more examples with different types of given information so you guys can see what to do with that information. So the first one, it tells us that O is the midpoint of segment MQ and O is the midpoint of NP. Well, what does midpoint mean? Well, here is point O, and if it's the midpoint of MQ, well, that means that this segment must be congruent to this segment. That's what midpoint means, cuts in half. And then it says if O is the midpoint of NP, well, that means that these two segments must be congruent because that is what a, that's what a midpoint is. And then the other thing that's tricky with this picture is let's, let's find out which triangle we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove triangle MON is congruent to triangle QOP. So these are the two triangles that we want to prove congruent. So remember how to start any proof. Always start with the given. So step one, I'm going to write O is the midpoint. And I'm going to abbreviate of segment MQ. And I'm going to write and segment NP. All right, and again, the reason is given. We always start with the given information. So again, we haven't marked, we haven't said anything congruent yet, but that information is going to tell us what we need. Okay, because of that, since O is the midpoint, all right, we'll start with MQ. Then we then can say that segment MO is congruent to segment MQ. And here's the reason for that. That is the definition of midpoint. And I'm abbreviating, you guys can do the same. Definition of midpoint. And again, remember, I like to tell you guys, put a little S there for the part. We need three sides here before we can end the proof. There's our first side, or three parts. Okay, let's do the next step. We said MO is congruent to MQ. Well, remember, look at our picture. We also said that NO, segment NO, is congruent to segment OP. And again, it's that same reason, definition of midpoint. And again, I said you got Mark with a little S there. That's two parts we've figured congruent. We need a third part. Well, we look at our triangles, and this is a bow tie type problem. Again, when I call them the bow tie because anytime we've got bow tie, we're going to have vertical angles. So we've got to name those angles. So got to use more than one letter. So it's like driving direction. I always say start at M, angle M, O, N is congruent to angle all right, we're going to go P-O-Q, or excuse me, Q-O-P, angle Q-O-P. And the reason, we're just going to write vertical angles. All right, you can put vertical angles congruent if you want. That works too. As long as you put vertical angles, I'm happy with that. And then that is an angle, so we want to put a little A there. Okay, so we look at our picture. We've got, two, we've got our three parts. We now then can end with our what we're trying to prove. So this is always the first thing we write. This is always the last thing. So we've got our three parts. Okay, we're going to say fifth step. All right, is triangle M O N is congruent to triangle Q O P. And what's the reason? All right, it, you can see our two sides. All right, side, angle, side. So we're just going to simply say, it is side, angle, side. We've got that angle, all right, where each congruent side touches that angle. It's in the middle, so it is side, angle, side. Okay, there's one involving midpoint. Here's one involving uh, perpendicular. We have not done one of these. So always start with the given, all right? Segment MP congruent to segment OP. Reason given. Okay, and there it is. There's a side. There's one part. All right, let's mark that on the picture. MP is right here. All right, OP right here. There's a little tick marks. And then number two, all right, it says that NP is oh, me, perpendicular to segment MO. And the reason is given. Now, just because they're perpendicular, does that tell us anything congruent? Not yet. So let's put our little congruence symbol there. Okay, so now we've got our side. Let's use that perpendicular. Why do they tell us? Well, remember, perpendicular means makes it forms a 90-degree angle. So we're going to say angle MPN and angle OPN 
our right angles. Our right angles. Again, the reason, definition of perpendicular. So since those are both right angles, okay, we then can say that angle M P N, this is where it's kind of tricky, you gotta write this extra step, is now congruent to angle O P N. And the reason, well, we're gonna put right angles are congruent. All right, if they're both right angles, they're both 90 degrees, by definition, that's what congruent means. So now we've got another angle, we've got a second little piece there. So we've got two parts. We look at the picture. What's, what's the third piece we can prove congruent? Look at the picture. Well, again, there's that shared side. Since they share a side, all right, we know that we can say it's congruent to itself. So that fifth is segment M or PN is congruent to itself. And the reason is reflexive. Don't forget about the reflexive property. And then finally, so we got our third piece. So side, we can see side angle side. You can see it the picture. Now we can end with our what we're trying to prove, which is always the last step. So a six-step proof triangle. M, N, P, congruent to triangle. O, N, P. And that reason is side angle side once again. So there you have it. little tip at the end. Everything you mark in your picture must be written in your proof.